this is Lisa from Mobile Tab Review, and today we're going to look at the Dell XPS 14. This is a sort of ultrabook, 4.6 pounds, so not quite as light, 14 inch, runs on Intel ULV third generation Ivy Bridge CPUs, and good looking, looks a lot like the new XPS 15, which also looks a little bit like the Mac from the lid only. If you take a look at the bottom, you see we have a silicone black soft touch finish. This guy has a large battery inside, which is one of the reasons you might want to consider it compared to other ultrabooks that may be slimmer and lighter. We're going to look at it now. So this is the Dell XPS 14, kind of sort of an ultrabook. Technically, it doesn't meet that requirement unless you go for the incredibly expensive high-end model that has pure solid-state storage. Otherwise, it has a hybrid drive. Ultrabooks are supposed to really have full SSD, but uh, it's moot, close enough. Also, at 4.6 pounds, clearly it's not one of those 3 pound or under super svelte and light ultrabooks, but it's a good looking machine and it really is a miniaturized Dell XPS 15, a, a notebook that we recently reviewed. From the lid, yes, it does look kind of like a MacBook Pro. It's got an aluminum lid here, curves on the edges, a little more straight up and down maybe than the Mac over here. Fairly thin, it's 0.81 inches thick, and that's our little sleep LED that lets us know it's asleep. But the resemblance stops when you look at the bottom where it looks very much like, well, your typical Dell with the soft touch silicone bottom that they've been doing. This is a little pop-up door here, a little hard to get open, not that you have to do it often, but the Windows product key is under here. Got some vents here, got some more vents over here, teeny little torque screw T5 holding the bottom plate on. Not the easiest thing to get on and off, Dell doesn't really plan on you taking this guy apart. And if we look on the side, on this side it's pretty clean. This is the SD card slot right here. It's got a little dummy, so it looks all nice and pretty when you don't have a card in there. And here's our combo headphone mic jack. And on this side is where most of the ports are on the left-hand side, convenient if you're a right-handed person. There's your power jack. This is the pop-down Ethernet. Full-size HDMI, mini display port for those of you who want to drive very large resolution monitors higher than 1920 by 1200, and two USB 3.0 ports. And that is it for ports. Typical of most sort of like Ultrabook kind of devices, you're not going to get a whole lot of ports. Really nice fit and finish. You can see how just nicely machined this is, how well it fits together, no creaks, no gaps, no ugly parts whatsoever. Certainly a gorgeous looking machine, and it should be because it starts at $1099 for the base model, which is the one we have here, and goes up to about $1500 for the most common higher end config, though there is a $2000 model that has a 512 gig SSD in here and a 1.9 gigahertz core i7 ULV CPU. Again, all third gen Ivy Bridge. Now if we take a look inside, again we'll see it looks way more Dell than anything else. And inside we can see that soft touch black keyboard deck that Dell likes to do these days. This panel is magnesium, by the way, and it has soft touch paint on it. It feels really nice. Again, a lot like the new De Dell XPS 15 and also like the XPS 13 Ultrabook. And here we have a 14 inch 1600 by 900 display that's clad in Gorilla Glass. Dell likes that for durability. It does introduce a little extra glare, but I suppose it gives you peace of mind for those of you who are actually worried about cracking your display. We like the little bit higher resolution on this, certainly it's better than the usual 1366 by 768 and you can certainly see more on screen without things being too teeny tiny for the eye. The 300 nit panel, it is a TN panel however, and that means the viewing angles are limited. You stay head on, it's pretty good, you go 30 degrees off axis, is pretty good. Beyond 45 degrees off to either side, or going up or down, then you start to notice inverting of colors and loss of black levels. In terms of contrast, contrast is decent on this, it's pleasing to watch a movie, but it's not superb, particularly when it comes to black levels, you you'll, won't notice really rich, deep blacks that can maintain a whole lot of detail, but not too bad a display and certainly compares favorably to some other Ultrabook displays on the market. It's driven by Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics. Optional, we don't have that on our base model here, but I think a lot of you are ordering it that way. You can get the NVIDIA GT 630M with one gig of DDR5 dedicated graphics on here and that's enough punch to give you a little extra help when you're trying to do something like edit HD video or maybe play some 3D games that are somewhat demanding. Now this is not a gaming rig by any means, it's still a ULV CPU and that's not the highest end graphics processor, but it is enough to get you going through certainly World of Warcraft, um, Left 4 Dead 2, those kind of games. In fact, you could even play a little Skyrim on this. Now, granted, Intel HD 4000 graphics will let you play Skyrim at, say, 1366 by 768, but this will let you bump it up to native resolution 1600 by 900 and maintain something like 30 frames per second, which is still playable. 
The keyboard has two stages of backlighting on it, again a lot like the Dell XPS 15 and 13, pretty pleasing black lighting. Really I love this keyboard, the Chiclet keyboard has pretty good key travel on it, nice spacing, feels great to type on, easy to get going fast with, so definitely a good keyboard. You got your little cluster of arrow keys here, they're doubling as page up, page down, home and end. Most things are pretty much where you would expect them, your delete key up here, your backspace key over here and so on. Definitely a pleasant product to type on. And here we have a fairly large glass Synaptics trackpad. If you get the Windows 8 version of this, which you will if you order it now direct from Dell, it'll support all the gestures, multi-touch gestures for Windows 8. And for those of you who like to be able to put your display back a little bit further, you can see this goes reasonably far. This is as far as it goes, but that's a lot better than some other Ultrabooks that we've seen with kind of tight lid designs where you can't go back very far at all. And in terms of viewing angles, it's kind of hard to show you because of the glare on the panel, but you get the idea here. It is, it is viewable still at 45 degrees, and obviously it gets the best when you start facing directly at it. And then, aha, huh, everything gets brighter and much sharper. So not too abysmal for those side viewing angles. The trackpad, by the way, really pleasant to use. Responsive, predictable, nice behaving, enjoying it a lot. Uh, certainly better than a lot of touchpads that HP turns out. In terms of performance, on PC Mark Vantage it scored a 6341, which is pretty much par for the course, a little better than average for something that has a spinning hard drive with just a small SSD cache drive. We'll get into the full specs of this in a minute. And on 3D Mark Vantage it scored a 2581. You can see our Windows Experience Index scores right here on screen. CPU scores 6.9, memory scores 5.9. Desktop performance for Aero, 4.7, 3D and business gaming graphics, 6.2, and 5.9 for the hard drive. Now again, our base configuration has Intel Core i7-3317U, that's 1.7 GHz ultra low voltage processor, the same that you're going to find in Ultrabooks. It has 4 gigs of RAM, the machine is available with either 4 or 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM. And we have a 500 gig conventional spinning 5400 RPM hard drive in here, augmented by a 32 gig SSD cache drive to speed up operations. And indeed, applications do launch fairly quickly. You can boot into Windows 7 in about 41 seconds on average, which is pretty, pretty good. Machine has dual band Wi-Fi, Intel Advanced Centrino N-6235, and has Bluetooth as well. There's a 1.3 megapixel webcam here, nice and bright and sharp, good webcam. We've got Realtek HD audio on board with Waves Max 4 audio. So this base model configuration sells for $10.99, again with the Core i5 1.7 GHz ULV CPU, Intel HD 4000 graphics, 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM, the 500 gig conventional spinning hard drive, and 32 gig SSD. For $1,500 you can get it with the Core i7 1.9 GHz, and that's the 3517U, and you get that 1 gig RAM NVIDIA GeForce GT 630M dedicated graphics card. So you've got switchable graphics there and you get 8 gigs of RAM. Clearly the juicier choice. And there are a couple of variations in between if you just want to get it without the dedicated graphics but you want more RAM and so on. You know Dell, they offer a lot of different built order options. Again, the big selling point for this versus something like the XPS 13 is the optional dedicated graphics for those of you who have use for that and also the bigger battery that's inside, the 69 watt per hour 8 cell battery. We found it's good for about 8.5 hours on a charge. That's about 2 hours better than the average Ultrabook, including the XPS 13. Not bad. Of course, also you get a slightly larger panel running at high resolutions. So for those of you who like the XPS 13 or Ultrabooks in general, but you just want a little bit more display, a little bit more battery life, well, that's what this guy's about. And also, if you want a little bit more in the graphics processing department. And to give you an idea of what that added resolution gets you, here we've got our website up here, full website, not mobile, and you can see that we've got room to spare on the side. If we brought this window over, you could actually have word processing open or your email open and be able to read something at the same time as you're browsing a web page, so pretty good there. Again, multi-touch gestures work very nicely, responsive, easy to use. And now we're going to test out video playback. What we have here is a 1080p trailer MPEG-4 high profile. The speakers are pretty good. You can hear them. We're about three quarters volume. To use the FN key for multimedia control, you'll use the FN plus this row by default. You can change that in BIOS if you wish. These are pretty loud. So I can handle that nicely. And the screen actually looks pretty good when watching movies. I have to say, it's a pleasing experience. It's pretty sharp. 
pretty bright at 300 nits. Nice colors, nice saturation there. And of course, this is not a 1080p panel, so that's actually higher than the resolution of the internal panel, but this does have both HDMI out and Intel Wi-Di for wireless display if you want to do it that way. And there's also that mini display port too. Overall, the XPS 14 is a gorgeous looking notebook. Very classy, really nice tactile services put together very nicely. Excellent keyboard with backlighting, higher than average resolution display, pretty good for watching movies and that kind of thing too. Better contrast, I find, in clarity than the XPS 13 display overall. I think Dell's picked up the game a little bit there. Not IPS, not super glorious, but looking good. If you're looking for a notebook that, that looks good outside, shall we say, you want to impress folks with something that looks pretty well made and high-end, well, this is obviously it. And starting at $10.99, the price isn't too bad for that. But particularly, if you're looking for something with longer battery life, the higher resolution display, that is, those are the big selling points for this notebook here versus other Ultrabooks. Of course, you're going to be carrying around 4.6 pounds, you're going to feel it. This is not something that you toss in your bag and you hardly notice. So, it's up to you. Battery life versus portability. Overall, a nice machine, and again, also now available with Windows 8. So that's the Dell XPS 14. It's available now. It's actually been out for a couple of months, getting refreshed now with Windows 8. Same hardware exactly, just a new operating system loaded. Again, it's a 14-inch, kind of a little thicker than heavier than your average Ultrabook machine, but it's good for those of you who need more battery life and a higher resolution 14-inch display. Be sure to visit Mobile Tech Review for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.